one of the main themes that we study is the kind of critical photo history and then we targeting particular areas of interest and make a research project and then it results since we have the facilities of a venue so we do exhibitions as a part of the research but also a way of presenting the research outcomes but also publications so we were thinking about looking into the interwar period and the reason for that was and then we found out they would say yes to bring that in immediately at that time the relation between film and photography was so tight so we thought this might be the real uh, reason for us to shift perspective and looking into lens-based cultures history and how they intertwine. Uh, this is also just saying that we have done a few uh, symposiums already. We invite people, both artists, scholars, uh, curators, to reflect on this and share uh, knowledge and, and research, uh, <coughs> ongoing research. And all this will then lead up 2021 in an exhibition and a publication. It starts with this exhibition at the Gothenburg Art Center of Göteborg's Konsthal, which was a very typical exhibition at the time, an international photo exhibition. And when you look, uh, when you enter the the, uh, the, the, <coughs> the entrance there, you could see any kind of photography. There were not only art photography, but of course science, botanics air photographs, all of this, which we thought this is so interesting because when history has been written, uh, particularly from the point of view of more like fine art photography, this heterogeneity has been, in a way, washed out. So we thought this would be a great way to start the research from a very, very local point of view, an exhibition held in Gothenburg with international photography. Me, myself, have in this research project looked into the published photographs and in the 1930s there was a Swedish photographer, or Swedish writer who, who worked on a series of novels that he defined as a social engaged novel, Ivalo Yuasan. And he looked into the group of people, you can call them, they were working in the in the uh, industry of the uh, farm industry, and they, they had very bad working conditions. Uh, they were giving the labor, and in return they get food and uh, housing. So they were kind of a slave system, in a way, not slave, but very, very rough. So he wrote about 1,000 pages on this in three different novels, one collection of novels and one, two, novels, one collection of short stories and one novel, and they are called Stop. And then he found out that actually to even take this further, he wanted to also include photographs. And this is a time when literature is it's extremely intermediate. So in the, in the books they refer a lot to folk Photographers and photography, film and filmmakers, and jazz music. And also that the books are composed and written as these medias were present within the novel and the language in itself. So he produced a book together with the photographer Gunnar Lund, uh, which is the, then called the Socially Engaged Photo Book. And this is the first uh, page of this one. And the interesting thing, this is a typical kind of using of the new objectivity. So this is a strong belief in actually that the photographs can tell something that the text can't. So in these books, the text is reduced. Imagine he published 10,000 pages of text on the same topic. And then he reduced the text and let the image show what the text couldn't really say at the same uh, at the same convincing manner. <coughs> Gunnar Lund took the photographs from 1935 to 1945 when this uh, system was abolished. And these are, uh, one was spread, and as you can see, this, the text is really kind of minor, and also the layout of the books is also very typical of its time, and is really informative, and you really get the message through the images. 
and this is about the tractor or the, the you know the, the development of the technique, techniques in the in the farming industry. And actually, the last of his books was actually about uh, a tractor, and it was in the reviews. Uh, in a positive way, it was said that it's almost like the novel was written by itself. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so this is an example of how uh, photography was acknowledged by writers with a social content and creating a kind of intermediate uh, uh, way of uh, using photography. And now I will leave the, the microphone to my colleague to continue. Yes. Yes, I'm going to sing my presentation. That's <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm going to try to explain a bit about the context where we met, actually, because, as Nicholas said, it's an interesting time, the interval period, because of the way that people active within film and photography actually soon have more in common, and they really try to find converging ideas, both academically and practically, and. I have been for the last 15 years looking a lot about different kinds of documentary genres and subgenres within film, <coughs> educational film, propaganda films, newsreels, and not least amateur film, which I'm, I'm very much into. And while doing that, I uh, found uh, uh, and stumbled over one of the most renowned uh, within Swedish photography, Hemel Beckstone who was very much indeed interested in both lens cultures and he was also at the time head of the Swedish Amateur Film Society in Sweden and was editing this book that came out yearly from the late interwar period and uh, his way of thinking and studying various forms of photographic techniques uh, made me interested in how could we actually work with this? And when I found what Nicholas and Luis and others did at Gollum and Hasselbach, we began to talk and just seen the sort of seminars we've had. The amateur context is interesting, not least what we heard earlier about the whole Bourdieu way of looking at photography and the sort of middle brow art way and how the amateurs actually did that and sort of unconsciously showing and just manifesting their way of living and just being within this bubble and a way to sort of step up and give more legitimacy to uh, legitimacy to the amateur film society in Sweden the guy coming after Bexman was Count Lennart Ballard part of the Swedish royal family he was for a long time heading the amateur film society but also started and was editor-in-chief of the, 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 the periodical photo. So I also looked at different kinds, and I'm going to go into that more deeply now, so the, the, the social strata within which film and photography worked and how the practices actually emerged and were solidated. As others have done, I've also looked at the commercial part of film and photography, and here it is so obvious that the discussion is more about lens media as something that is one culture. Uh, you, you see different kinds of application of, and, uh, and different kinds of, of uh, advertising for film and photo within this yearly book that came out at the 10th anniversary of the Swedish Market Federation. But the longer the interwar period but the more interested people within photo and film became of the cognitive way of persuading people, of looking at it. And to me, the relation between photography, film, and knowledge has one step before it. It's between photography and film and information. The interesting thing I'm trying to find out, what happens actually from the data and information, and how does it become knowledge in various forms, theoretically, academically, but also in everyday life uh, among citizens. So I'm looking into this about how one's discussed <coughs> audiovisual and visual media as sort of art of persuasion. And that was also done 
in order to look at more closely how regional and local practitioners started to look at how can we actually present ourselves visually on the vision with the help of photography and film. And uh, here I think that John Tack's discussion about photography also goes into uh, to, uh, uh, the way that Sweden, not least during the interwar period, began to go into this social engineering project, the welfare state, at a, 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 of a social democracy at a moment of deep structural crisis, using the documentary as an authority, something that was reliable, and trying to make images of the new society and distrib distribute it across the nation. And on the far, far right, we have two different films, so the same film from 1938, they're all from 38, uh, about Gothenburg, where I now am since four years back. And uh, we're trying to now really go into the deep strata of Gothenburg cultures, where the visual will become more and more uh, uh, central. Because uh, yesterday, I'm glad to say, the Vice Chancellor transformed us into a center for collaborative visual uh, research. So now we're going to, during six years, really go into various forms of visual uh, cultures, but also trying new ways to disseminate this knowledge and this research on the town, on projections at different kinds of buildings, at exhibitions, but also naturally on different various uh, digital platforms. Yeah. And apart from the two uh, uh, symposiums we had, uh, we also have right now a project together with the Gotham City Museum, and the next step is hopefully that something will happen with this new uh, lens uh, media culture uh, application that we sent in a couple of weeks ago. And I give over to you. Thank you. So I'm part of this project as a postdoc. Uh, at Valand Academy and uh, together with the Hasselblad Spikersen. So uh, I started this, uh, at least officially, I started this position this week on Monday. <laughs> it's just at the beginning of it. So in my part of the project, I'm also looking at this interwar period, but through the works of contemporary artists that, uh, and photographers. So I'm meeting this history through engagements in the present. Uh, through the works of artists who in different ways work with material from this time, uh, archive images, but also uh, other types of material. Uh, and also through some of my own engagements with material from this time. So, this kind of meeting or engagement with historical material is something that I looked at a little bit before in my doctoral thesis which came out last year, which is called Photographic Engagements, Belonging and Effective Encounters in Contemporary Photography. And here I looked at some of the historical material as a small part of a wider discussion about the notion of belonging in contemporary photography. And then some of the practices that I was looking at was about this kind of engagement with history, but then in relation to the notion of uh, belonging in general. So now as a part of this project, I will narrow in on this interwar period through work by, for example, Lina Selander and Katarina pirek and also other ones that I, uh, I don't know yet. So I'm going to bring up one <coughs> work by Lina Selander as an example of what I'll be doing in my part of the project. But before that, I want to say a few words about this idea of engaging with historical material and photographs in particular. So when I talk about engaging with this material, my aim is to focus not just on the meaning of photographic images or other material, or on questions about its truthfulness or correspondence. Uh, my aim is rather to focus on the effective and the embodied and the material aspects of these meetings. 
a perspective which, as you will see in the example that I'm about to show, is not disconnected from these <coughs> questions of truthfulness and correspondence, but which is intricately connected to these questions. So the focus is on the situated, the affected, the embodied, the material meeting as the beginning and also as the point of return to these larger questions of history, of wider patterns, of boundaries, of utopian ideas, of ideologies, technologies, uh, and so on. So the idea is that history can never be told in abstraction, but neither can effective engagement with photography, for example, exist as separation from these wider stories and narratives. So I'm probably going to be writing about several works by Lena Selander, but I will mention just one here briefly. Uh, it's called The Hours That Hold the Form from 2007, and it's a short film. Uh, it consists of mostly still images, also some movie images. And you can see it as exactly th this kind of engagement with one particular time in history, uh, with the place and objects and images left behind. So it starts with one particular site, namely a hotel in Porto, on the border between France and Spain, where the philosopher Walter Benjamin took his life after having made the journey across the Pyrenees in 1939, but then finding himself unable to cross the border, not knowing that the very day after uh, the borders would be open. Uh, so the work concerns the effect of encounter with the space itself, the hotel room, uh, the rusty nickel on the typewriter, the faded hotel bell, uh, and the mold that we can see in some of the images, even the smell of the sea, if we can make those associations, and also the train station at Port Pou, where Frenchmen today arrive to buy cheap, uh, cheap liquor. So, in the work, the material situated particularities of the story is then connected to other narratives through images and also through this voiceover uh, that you can see the words to hear. Narratives about fleeing, about being a migrant, and here about making a journey on a raft amidst high waves of losing one's documents, of trying to tell one's story to a disbelieving listener. So the voiceover tells us, for example, like we saw before, one must be aware of what is said is not necessarily the truth, <coughs> and also how a photo of a bruise can be taken at any time. So it's the same, at the same time about the impossibility of telling a story, of determining the truth from someone's story, or from the object the image is left behind. So these affective and material and altogether situated experiences cannot be disconnected from the history of the place itself, from Walter Benjamin's story, from the stories and memories and feelings of migration today, and the politics to, politics to which it's connected, to the history of the Second World War, the history of Europe, the history of the world, or the history of the universe, if you like. So the idea is just like any meeting with a photograph. Uh, any meeting with a photograph is always at the same time a situated, effective, and material engagement, and connected to these wider patterns and traces of world-changing events. So that's all to be continued. <laughs> <laughs>